Fernando! It's great to be back at CPAC. I couldn't come last year because of travel restrictions. Mercifully, though, and isn't it appropriate that CPAC is being held in Florida? The one state in the USA that, with Ron DeSantis as governor, maintained a sane and sensible policy whilst the rest of the world went mad. Well done, Ron DeSantis. Well done, Florida. Brilliant. It's just as well CPAC's not being held in Canada at the moment. <laughs> where Mr Trudeau has become, I think, the most authoritarian. You must all be half asleep. It's clearly been a long day. I said Justin Trudeau. <laughs> well, that's a bit more like it. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, most of Europe still have the most terrible restrictions put in place. But I'm pleased to say that in England, sanity has finally prevailed. We are beginning to win, and all restrictions have been lifted. But the fight must go on. It isn't just about restrictions. We've got to stand up and fight for freedom of choice. We must go on fighting vaccine mandates every single time we get the opportunity. Our freedom is at stake and it matters. It's what our forefathers left us. We're not going to let global politicians take it away from us. And it's a fight that we can win. And it's a fight that we are going to win. Be in no doubt about that. But right now, the world is facing something even more immediate, something even more serious. And I guess there'll be a lot of Americans who quite understandably will say, Ukraine is a long, long way away. I would guess there are many in all of our countries who would struggle to point on a map to where Ukraine actually is. And I bet there are many Americans who say, just think what this country gave in World War I and in World War II. Think of the massive price that America paid to get Europe out of its problems. Well, the fact is, if America hadn't done things, Europe would have been unlivable for the last 75 years, and we owe America a massive, massive debt for our freedom and our liberty. Not that, uh, not that you'll ever hear that from a French politician. <laughs> who almost seemed to resent what you did for them. So what I'm about to say will perhaps to some ears sound unfair. But it's this. Vladimir Putin is a nationalist Russian. He wants to get back, at least I thought, he wanted to get back the Russian-speaking areas into his country. When it comes to those two eastern provinces in Ukraine, well, they are Russian-speaking. I'd always thought that we were dealing with somebody who was actually very logical. But I now begin to wonder whether he is. Then again, of course, he's had nothing to fear, has he? The worst American president in the history of this nation. No question. I'm not allowed to say, let's go, Brandon, because it's too rude. So let's go, Brandon! <laughs> I am in no doubt that if Donald Trump had still been the president, 
that invasion of Ukraine would not have happened. I'm in no doubt about that. But it has happened. And if something's gone wrong with Putin, if he's lost logic and reason, it's not impossible to think that he'll want to go back to the days of Catherine the Great and the Tsarist Empire, and that Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia are under threat. He also is probing at NATO, and I'll tell you why. This remarkable alliance that has worked since the late 1940s was put there to guarantee peace, has pretty much done a very good job over those years. But something happened last year. America withdrew from Afghanistan unilaterally without even consulting your closest ally in the world. And let's face it, we've been with America in virtually every major conflict side by side you since 1917 and what Joe Biden did without a phone call was to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan. And we're asking ourselves a question. Do America still want to be the leaders of the Western world? Because if they're not, we have a problem. And the truth of it is, and this is unfair on American taxpayers and American people, but it's a fact, the truth of it is, without America, NATO is a waste of space. Without America, without America, Putin can do what the hell he wants, and we don't have the strength to stop him. Donald Trump did his best to make delinquent NATO members start paying the membership fee, and he was right to do so. But it's still, it's still not enough. It's still not enough. So there needs to be a big public debate in America right now about NATO. Do you wish to continue leading NATO? And if you do, that message must be sent loud and clear to Vladimir Putin. Because you know, if it's not, if that message isn't sent, I think Putin may well continue. I've come to that conclusion over the last few days. We've behaved very badly in many ways. We promised, we promised the Russians when the wall came down we would not extend NATO and the European Union to the east, and they've seen that as an encroachment on their territory. We have made mistakes. We have got things wrong. We have not been honest about much of our dealings with Ukraine and Russia, but the fact is we are where we are. What Putin has done is truly dreadful. It is dangerous. It is frightening. And if we believe in independent nation states and liberty, and democracy, then America and Britain, by your side, have to send Putin that message. No further can he be allowed to go. We have to send it. <laughs> because if we don't, if we don't, we'll face an even bigger threat. Don't think Putin's the biggest danger we face. A friend of mine says it like this. He says, China. <laughs> China. Oh, you'll hear it tomorrow, I've no doubt. <laughs> you will. And what Donald Trump did is he woke the world up to the threat that China posed when before Donald Trump, nobody dared even talk about it. He did that. He woke us up. If China sees how weak we are, it could, within the next few months, and goodness me, Chinese state media this week has been broadcasting saying that Taiwan is part of China. If China takes Taiwan, do you realise what that will do to us? Despite the massive investments, the semiconductors that are needed for so much of our modern life, the semiconductors that are needed without which the car industry would grind to a halt, they are still manufactured for the most part in Taiwan. If China moves against the weak West, if China moves against the weak American 
president, oh, I think for him, weak's quite a complimentary word, really, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but if China moves and takes Taiwan, that will have disastrous consequences for all of us. So you see, however you feel sitting here right now, however, however uncomfortable you feel about this burden of responsibility that is on America's shoulders, you can see if we don't act, don't get this right, it will have catastrophic consequences. They're the enemies that we face outside, but we also face enemies inside. Our universities have been turned into madrasas of Marxism, determined to indoctrinate and poison our young people, determined to turn the population. Is it not working? Is that better? Good. Would have thought CPAC had got the kit right, but anyway. <laughs> our young people are being poisoned. We're being turned against ourselves. Whilst these great threats, these great global threats that I'm talking about are happening, we're still busy teaching people to feel guilty about being white. We've still got corporates giving money to an openly Marxist organization that wants to defund the police force and bring down Western civilization. And yet the corporates bow down. We're all supposed to take the knee to an organization called Black Lives Matter, and nobody seems. Very few people have got the courage to stand up and to fight that. So we have that problem within that we have to fight. And I know many of you are doing it. You're running for school boards. You're getting involved, and that's great. But if we're going to make the world a better place, if we're going to keep our history, our heritage, our culture, if we're going to defend Western civilization, this is the battleground. It's America. Because if America falls, the whole of the free world will fall. You've got to win this fight. And to do that, to do that, you've got to take back the House. You've got to take back the Senate. You've got to take back, in 2024, the presidency of the USA. And you can do it. You can do it. The Democrats are making a complete mess of everything. But don't underestimate their machine. Don't underestimate their discipline. Don't underestimate how well-funded they are. And to beat them, all we need is the silent majority to stand up and say, I am going to do something. I am going to make an effort. I am going to join an organization. We need you. Well, all of us in the free world need you to win this.